Sea level rise in the Everglades is real. The entirety of South Florida's ecosystem is being affected. Now, imagine if South Florida's orchestra of life was threatened. From an Everglades standpoint, from a South Florida standpoint, sea level rise means a lot more than just the encroachment along the coastline. It also means that the low-lying interior, like the Everglades and stuff, are suddenly going to have pressure coming from underneath and pushing up. And so besides the salt water coming over the edge, we're going to get this sort of pushing up of fresh water in the center, and so there's going to be flooding everywhere. The water in South Florida does not flow freely on its own, as it uses bedrock to aid its travel. The bedrock under Florida is not solid. It has holes in it. This is the sort of um, bedrock we have, which means that water travels into it easily and out of it easily. And when salt water is coming in from the ocean, it can push up and just travel upwards underground. It doesn't have to have, you know, storm sewer or anything to be able to get up upwards. So the more that sea level rises, the more problems there are, not just by the coast, but even inland with sea level rise. We're already seeing it happen. The future is now in the Everglades. It's not um, something that we're anticipating. It's something that's happening right now. So as seawater begins to intrude into freshwater wetlands, you see just entire um, wetland collapse. And the vegetation is affected. The water um, quality is affected. Basically, a lot of places that had been freshwater peat, freshwater marshes are now becoming more saltwater. So the elevation, the land elevation up even by Tamiami Trail is only six and a half to seven feet. So if, if, when sea level rise gets to six or seven feet, almost all of Everglades National Park will be underwater. We're going to about to take a little walk through what's called an area of the Big Cypress. We call this uh, Dayhoff's. Eric Kimmel has been a long-standing defender of the Everglades since he was a boy. Being exposed to the Everglades has made Eric realize just how important it is to protect the ecosystem of South Florida. The Glazeman culture came from Hispanics, the Runaways, the Bahamians, Native Americans, and whites. Because this is something I have, is, even though this is considered anecdotal evidence, not scientific, but over a 50 year period, I've seen this change over the seasons. Of course, you're going to have wetter and drier years where this would be drier naturally. But as a rule, there should have been at least a half inch to an inch of water coming across this prairie. I've been coming out here all my life. I was born in Miami. My father took me out here before I could walk. I've always had a good time out here. It's a place that's always been wild and free. The Kimball family's exploration of the Everglades has continued throughout generations. Cody, Eric's son, often accompanies his father to see the beauty of the Everglades. Oh, I, that's the most precious memories of my life was uh, watching them grow up out here. They learned um, more about the environment than anything you'll learn in any college or any, there's not a biology professor out there that, you know, could teach them what they learned on their own walking out in the woods with us. We've made a tremendous amount of progress, I would say, in the last seven years, really. And um, some of the sort of big steps forward that we've made are really in those, in that central and southern Everglades restoration effort. And that's the, that's the part of Everglades restoration that probably has the biggest impact on, sea, on combating sea level rise. It's going to be an interesting time to be alive, watching things happen, but the main thing is not to expect that things will stay the same, because they won't. The public, maybe the reason that they're not as engaged is that they, these issues seem overwhelming. They, they, well, what can I do to respond? There are responses, and um, government's working on a lot of them, the private sector is working on a lot of them, and it's just a matter of putting our you know, nose to the grindstones and getting these projects implemented. These projects include protecting water quality, protecting water storage needs, and restoring the historic water flow from Lake Okeechobee to the Everglades. The, the one take-home message that everybody needs to realize is the Everglades is our best filter, our best in terms of water quality. It's our best sponge in terms of soaking up flood water and even sea level rise. I mean, it's the best friend we have if we want to continue to live in South Florida, right? And so we are both the problem and the solution. We can keep South Florida and the Everglades vibrating with sound for years to come, but we must work together.